India is an incredible nation of 1.2 billion people. There are over 400 dialects, 36 official languages. Uh, it's essentially a subcontinent, almost the size of Africa. It's, it's, it's a huge nation. Uh, the smells, the sights and the sounds, there's so much color. It's such a beautiful place. And uh, their clothing and all the food, there's just, there's an array of colors everywhere. India is the birthplace of four of the world's major religions, the second largest Islamic country on earth. There's Amritsar in the Punjab, which is the home of Sikhism, and Varanasi, which is the home of Hinduism. The religion known over here is Hindu. They, Hindu means that they believe in different in goddesses. Like they have thousands of goddesses in Himachal. Kulu Valley is known for goddesses. I want to tell you a few things about my parents. My father was a Brahman like Hindu priest, we, we can call them. Every day they have an idol before them. They used to burn some incense and they used to pray every morning and evening. And then you have a place like Ladakh, where a number of the children come from, which is predominantly Buddhist. In the West, we have these ideas that Buddhism is this very gentle philosophy that is a guiding principle for life. But if you actually go to Ladakh and you go to some of the places where these children come from, you will discover that even the monks will tell you that this is not a life philosophy. In fact, they'll even tell you that they, they actually uh, worship certain entities uh, that have possession of those, of those monasteries and temples. They will name them. They have depictions of them all over the walls. Each village they have different gods, known by different names, and they would worship priests, they would worship stones, and they would make something special, and they would start worshiping that god. And like, they think that that god is the real god. And here, if we talk about Jesus Christ, they would hardly understand. Because as I'm working here more than 20 years, I have seen many people, they are looking for uh, peace and joy so they don't uh, find any peace and joy, only in Jesus. The truth is, the gospel message has not really reached this part of the world. And so India as a whole has less than 1% of its entire population who have ever heard or embraced the message of Jesus. North India has an even lower statistic in that regard, and that is exactly where the children's homes are. India was on our hearts and we decided in 2007 to send a team to India to really seek out uh, the heartbeat of the nation of India. And really felt a strong call to India and a strong desire to, to spend something there. And so then we began to form Child of Mind at the two homes, the Shanti Niketan Children's Home and the Daryl Fazal Home. One of the things that stuck out to us right from the beginning was that these homes had a vision. It wasn't that Child of Mine created a vision and then tried to supplant it on the homes, but actually that the leadership of these homes already had a vision. And that vision was to raise the future leaders of the Church of North India. So for them, I really wish that they have Jesus. Because if they have Jesus, they have everything. I'm from Nepal, basically. My parents, they are Nepali. I was born in Nepal with my father and mother. But my father ran away with a man, so that's how I came into the home. Darul Fazal is the name taken, and it's taken from Urdu. Actually, it means House of Grace, and it's such a suitable name for this place. One of the most amazing things that we hear people talk about when they go to India is they see the street kids, they see the beggars, they see the beggar masters. It just breaks their hearts, and then they go up to the mountains, to these beautiful children's homes, and they hear laughter, and they see games, and they see kids who get to play and who get to be in a safe environment, just being taken care of, being provided for, and they get to grow up and go to school, and that's what they have to focus on. They have to focus on homework, 
You don't have to think about where their next meal comes from. 